Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 669. Today we're going to talk about Irish Gauge. This is coming out from Capstone Games, and I believe it's the first in their line of iron rail games. You can kind of see on the side of the box there. And I believe this series is going to sort of like reprint and kind of re gussy up old winsome games that have come out over the past several years. So winsome games are typically train games, which is what this is. And I believe they would print out like 500 copies or something like that at Essen. And they would be sort of, uh, you know, not the greatest component quality, but that usually doesn't matter for that style of game. Uh, so they've kind of taken and sort of made pretty uh, and sort of selected and, and curated a selection of those older train games. And they're gonna start bringing them back. Uh, so if you're familiar with like Chicago Express and German Railways, there's a couple of games of similar in this ballpark that I've reviewed over the last several years. Um, and so it's, it's right in that ballpark, it plays three to five players, it's got auctions, it's got network building and things like that. So let's jump into and take a look at the mechanics, a little bit how they work, and then I'll come back and tell you what I think. Okay, so I've got the board and everything set up here. A couple things to note, you can see obviously you've got a map here with some hexes. We've got some cubes that have been randomly seated out onto these various city locations. There'll be a bag of these cubes. You do some kind of pre preparation of this bag. A certain number of these cubes come out and you, you seed the board with them. And then you'll have a whole mess of them, which you can't see, in here of these three colors, black, white, and pink. If you look closely on the board, you'll see little icons here that represent various different uh, train lines of different colors and these represent various different companies. So here's where the purple will start and up here you'll see the red and the blue both start in Dublin. Now to start the game everybody's going to get $20 and again this is a three to five player game. So here's the money which is these nice cards and then you will randomly decide a start player and then you'll have a round of auctions and then you'll get into the beginning of the game. Now whoever was determined to be the start player is going to put the first yellow stock up for option. And this you can see actually, you can see the number of shares. So there's three shares, seven, 12, and 17. And this is the initial offering value of the first share. If we look at the following share, once we get later in the game, we start auctioning more shares. That one's gonna start at 12, and the third one's gonna start at 17. And each of these is represented nicely like that. So the first player is going to offer that up and they could pass if they wish. Uh, but if they do bid, they have to bid at least a minimum of seven indicated there. We go around the table. Once you pass out of the bidding, you're out. Whoever wins pays their money to the bank and then you get that share of stock. And the winner of that auction will then immediately auction off the purple one. And the same thing goes. And then we keep going down. The winner of the preceding auction will offer up the next one. Now, if everybody decides to pass on a share, let's say we get down the road here, this will typically happen in a game with less players. Uh, maybe, you know, it's my turn, I don't really wanna spend any money on this, everybody passes, then I will actually get this for free. That's the only time that will actually happen in the game. So it's possible to get a stock for free, which is uh, hopefully a deterrent from people spending too much money uh, early in the bidding round. So once you've gone and bid one share of each of these stocks in this order here, left or right, whoever has the share of yellow will be the start player. And when you play the game, you do one of four actions on your turn. The one thing that you could do again is offer up a share for bid. And in this case, you can't offer up a share and then just pass. You offer it up and let's say we were wanting to offer up maybe the second uh, purple one. And I would say, okay, we're gonna offer that up and I have to bid at least $10 Oops. as indicated there and then we again we go round and around whoever gets it keeps the share the other thing that you can do is actually build rails and you have to have at least one share in the company to build rails it doesn't matter you just need at least one so let's say on a previous turn or the opening bidding I had a share of purple and in that case I will get three build points to build purple if I want to do a build as my action. Now there's a handy chart at the top of the board and this shows you how much build points each of these hexes cost to build. So let's look at some examples here. So if I had three build points, I could if I wanted to start to make my way over here to Kilkenny because each of these empty hexes costs one build point to enter. 
Now, if I wanted to build in one of these difficult hexes here, indicated with this sort of shadow, that actually cost me two build points. So I couldn't get quite as far if I went up this way. That would cost two plus one, and that equals three, my total build points, and I would be done. Now let's say for fun here, purple wanted to come down here to where yellow was. So on their turn, they built three down there. And then yellow, likewise, they kind of want to connect these two cities, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Now that yellow's a little bit stuck right at this point if they want to go up there because this one will cost them two, this one will cost them one, so that'll be three build points. If they wanted to, for some reason, go out this way, this costs one and a half build points. If there's any other rails there. It doesn't matter the number of other rails. It could be that orange is also in here and they, they came maybe by on the earlier turn. And so if yellow wanted to go in there, that would still just cost them one and a half. This next one would cost them another one and a half. And again, 1.5 plus 1.5 equals three. So they would be done building in that case. And the same rule goes for building into a city. If y'all had to kind of work their way up here and then wanted to actually build there, that just costs one build point. But if there is another train company there, again, that costs 1.5 as well. Now there are three sort of special cities on the board. If you take a look here, Galway is outlined in red, as well as Dublin, which we saw earlier. And then all the way up here to Belfast up there, that's also outlined in red. So if you ever connect a a single company to all three red cities you'll see this nicely indicated on the board there those are kind of like your major cities you'll pay an immediate twelve dollar dividend out to all the players that own shares and I'll explain how you pay out dividends in just a second. Now, the next thing you might do is what we might call a development action or building a special interest in this case. So in that case, you can take a look at the bag. So we'll just dig in here and find some cubes. You can take a look and see how many of the various colors are left and how many you know are already on the board. And you can take one of these color cubes and then put it on that and sort of develop that city. Then you put the rest of the cubes back in the bag. You can always freely look at these. But if you decide to take the next action, which is actually calling for dividends, then at that moment, you cannot look in the bag. So what's gonna happen at that point, if I decide on my turn to call dividends, I'm gonna look in the bag blindly, and then I'm going to pull out three cubes. Ta-da, oh, that was funny. And I pulled out three black cubes. So just for fun, let's say instead of three black cubes, I pulled out two black cubes and a white cube. We're gonna go ahead and mark these on the dividend track here. And what that's telling us is these color cities are going to pay out. So only black and white are gonna pay out on this round. Uh, pink will not pay out. It doesn't matter the amount of cubes. If the previous example, I had drawn three black cubes, only black would pay out. So what does it mean uh, by paying out? Let's look at an example. So what you typically do is you work down the line left to right at the top of the board. So you figure out any but that has yellow shares, do they have cities that are paying out? And then you go next to purple and so on. And so the next example, let's look at purple. So purple's kind of built this up a little bit like so. Oh, and I forgot to put one here for the example. There should be a train there. So again, black and white are paying out. So this pink city here is not really worth considering. Okay, we're only gonna look at black and white cities and also towns. Now towns are these cities here that don't have a cube yet. And so for each town that pays out, you get $2 for each fully developed city of a matching color, again, black and white. These will pay out four. Pink is gonna pay nothing because it wasn't drawn. So in this case, we've got here connections to all of these cities here. So we're gonna get four, six, 10, 10 again, nothing for that one, plus another four, 14. So we get 14 for all of these. We're ignoring pink because again, pink doesn't pay out. Now to have any kind of payout, you need at least a connection between two paying cities, which we've got plenty of here, black and white, and black and white again are all connected, or you need a connection between a paying city and a town. But again, the paying cities pay four, the towns pay two, anything that's not paying pays zero. So you take that number, and then you divide it by the number of shares, and then you round up. So again, what do we have, 14 here? So if these shares were owned by two different people, that would be easy, that would be seven. 
And there's a handy little chart here, which I believe has a mixed print on it. I have really found this not really useful at all because the math is pretty straightforward, but this is kind of nice uh, if you can kind of track stuff, uh, you know, who's in sort of, it's also kind of a way to kind of watch things a little bit. You could kind of use it that way where you're saying, okay, well, there's this many shares out. That's how much this is paying, but then it's random anyway, so there's not really a reason to keep track of it between turns either. So I found this sort of useless, but because uh, like I said, the math is pretty straightforward. So you're gonna keep playing the game until this bag is empty. And again, you draw cubes out of this bag in one of two ways. So on your turn, if you pull in and you pull the last cube and you're trying to you know, mark a city here as a special interest, if that's the last cube, game's over. Or if you do pull dividends, and after pulling cubes out, then the bag is empty. Now it's feasible that you pull cubes for dividends and maybe there's only two or one cube in there and everybody's gonna know what those colors are because you're able to look at the bag beforehand. So in that case, again, only the cubes that were drawn, even though there was less than three, are gonna pay out. At that point, you're gonna add up all the money that you've collected through payouts and dividends, and you're gonna to add to that the large number here on the share. So the initial offering cost of each of the shares is gonna be added to uh, your total amount. Whoever's the most money is the winner, and this is actually one of the more interesting things about the game. So let's go and listen to what I think. Okay, so that was uh, Irish Gage. Uh, let's go through my three pillars of reviews. First, we'll talk about player count. I've only played this three and five players, not played it with four, I don't know that that's gonna matter. I I don't think player count actually, well, it matters <laughs> to the game, but in terms of like, which player count do I like more? I don't, doesn't matter to me. I would say this is fine, three, four, five. Uh, the game's gonna be a little bit different just because like the distribution of shares, this is like typical of any train game. Uh, the distribution of shares is gonna be a little bit different. So you're sort of like, you know, in a sort of a semi, temporary partnership with other players that you might share stock in, but then you're like, you don't want them to buy shares in your stock because you want to get all the dividends and that kind of stuff. Um, I, probably three players is a little bit more interesting, I think. I don't know, I go with, I can talk for, I'm, I'm not smart enough to figure out. <laughs> let's, just, let's just cut right to the chase. I'm not smart enough to figure out which one I like more. Um, but I, it's fun, it's just different with, with uh, with both, and then honestly, the other thing is it's kind of the plan depends on the temperament and and sort of the other players and how they're kind of playing and how frivolous they're being with their auctions and that kind of stuff too. So that's actually probably more important than the actual count of players. Uh, the game is going to come in like right at an hour. Probably you could three players. You could probably get it forty five minutes. Mine took an hour. Uh, Maybe slightly over an hour, twenty minutes or something with more. I don't, I don't know, I don't see it really happening. No, once everybody's play it once and kind of, you know, figured out the game a little bit, you're gonna be right solid 45 minutes to an hour. Probably doesn't really matter on player count at that point. I would expect five experienced players could knock this out in 45 minutes, which is a, a bonus, I think, in, in terms of this game. Uh, so a couple things I wanna sort of talk about. Obviously, I kind of mentioned at the beginning, what games is this like? It's like Chicago Express, it's like German Railways. I've reviewed those games in the past. There's probably a couple other of these sort of winsome you know, sort of simple train games that have a, like a good amount of strategy and stuff like that to them. Uh, so if you're familiar with those games, or you're not, I definitely recommend at least giving like this one a try or one of those a try for sure, um, because it, it does some things that I really like that I've played in 18, well, one 18xx game. I kind of understand why I didn't really like the whole stock market shenanigans in that and why I sort of appreciate this one, uh, this sort of style of train game a little bit more personally. Uh, a couple of things that this does really well that's really kind of different and unique. Uh, you know, a lot of these train games is like, they take the same basic thing, buying stock, auction them, building routes, and they throw in like the weird little mechanical spicy twist in it. And this one is two things. One is the auction shares. So I mentioned that there. You see how there's a big number and I talk about how you score that points at the end of the game in addition to uh, your money. So a lot of times you, you will score just your money or you'll score your money plus whatever the stock's actually worth at the end of the game, which makes probably a little more sense. But I like what this does because you're like, okay, this is a $7 share. If I pay $7 for it, I'm not really losing any points, right? Because I'm gonna add that seven and that's gonna allow me to make more money. 
with you know getting dividends. So it's a it's a net gain for me. Yeah, what if I paid eight dollars for that share? I'm, so I'm, I'm shedding a point, and then I'm going to hopefully using that to you know milk more points out of the game. And then so that sort of constraint that sort of just lays across the board uh, is very interesting because you're like, okay, well at the end of the game, this share is you know the base cost is eighteen bucks. But it's like, well, whatever. If I pay 18 bucks for it, then I've still got the 18 bucks because I still get the points at the end of the game. Uh, so that's a very curious and interesting sort of approach uh, to the game and how that kind of works. Um, and it's sort of, it's just a really, maybe it's, I could see some people arguing maybe over streamlined sort of stock market. It's like baked right into the share and the progression is just fixed progression to a degree. Um, but I found that really, really kind of interesting and different. And it's also very easy to teach and uh, get people to kind of understand that uh, that concept. Like, oh, if I pay this, so I can pay you know a couple bucks over, but I don't want to go too high because then I'm kind of you know wasting that extra money there. So the second part of it that's interesting, obviously, is the uh, pulling the cubes out of the back. And there's really a lot to kind of going on with that because, of course, you can just you can just pull a cube and, and put it out. And you want, if you're, let's say your, your main interest is purple, you want it to kind of connect to every color because then it's got a shot, you know, give or take, of, you know, every time a, a, a pull happens, you're going to get dividends out of that. Uh, but there's also uh, ways to sort of concentrate uh, certain colors and, you know, take a look at the probability of colors coming out because you can always kind of look in the bag in between turns and be like, hmm, there's a bunch of black cubes in here. <laughs> so, you know, chances are we're going to, you know, connect to black. Um, and so the way that that works and the way that that sort of like holds itself over the game from probably, you know, just a little bit after the beginning of the game through, you know, two thirds or four fifths of the way or something like that towards the end of the game and sort of, you know, makes the game really interesting. Now the sort of, not necessarily the problem because the game's quick. So this, this next thing doesn't really matter, but you can kind of tell like once you get to the game, you're like, well, they're winning <laughs> because you know, you can look in the bag and be like, well, these pay out. I'm getting that much. They're getting that much. Okay. So what's the big deal? Like I've got a, how many times around the table am I going to get a chance to lay track? And they're going to know that too and be like, well, I don't want them laying any more track. <laughs> so they just go like, okay, pull, pull. And then at that point you're like, well, why do I even bother playing this turn to lay track? To get two extra bucks, that's not enough because if well, I know when they pull, they're going to get this much. So the end is like a slight, like, you know, little, just a tiny bit anticlimactic. Um, but it's okay because it's like, it's a couple of minutes at the end of the game and you just kind of know, well, you can immediately look back, you know, 15 minutes ago and be like, well, I should have did this or that. And, you know, or maybe if Billy hadn't have done that, then you know, <laughs> that would have screwed everything up. Um, so it's just a slight sort of easing off the edge. Um, but the rest of the game, that real whole, you know, if, we, if the game is 15 minutes long, 45 minutes of it is interesting. So if you reset the game and play it again, it's quick. Um, you can just be like, well, we got a clean slate here and now the game's super interesting again. So you kind of just immediately forget the next time you play the game about that last five minutes of, hold on, let me do some quick math. Okay, congratulations, you won, Billy. <laughs> Cause there's nothing you can do about it. So you have just a little bit of that, but that tends, that's not like a rare thing in these kind of train games and stuff like that. It's just kind of part of the, part for the course. Uh, so other than that, that, and I don't think that part should bother you, but if it does, then you know what it is. Uh, but this is a nice, interesting, you know, easy to get into, quick to play, easy to teach, uh, nice components. These little trains are small, but they kind of have to be. Um, I didn't find them too fiddly or anything like that. Uh, good quality art and components, everything. So that will make it a little bit more attractive to play. And I think there is some replay value here. You could probably get at least a good dozen plays out of this um, and then maybe shelve it for a year and pull it out again. So it's just kind of one of those nice, easy going train games that's, you know, still got some good crunchy stuff happening, some nice chants and things to kind of mix things up uh, in terms of pulling the cubes. You can get some of those dramatic moments where you, you like you pull all black cubes like I did in the walkthrough and that'll kind of mix the game up a little bit. So because you've got that opportunity for that, it's not going to like really bust the game open. You know, somebody might like be able to, uh, that's kind of been neglected by the cubes. Maybe that'll favor them, you know, but once those three black cubes are out of the game, 
well then you know the chances of black being pulled probably just one way down you know give or take so i definitely recommend folks look at this um you know definitely it's a dry game it's a train game but i do enjoy this style of like uh economic style game uh from time to time and this is this is one of one of the ones that i've really enjoyed i would put it up there with um personally like i like the best one that i've played personally is german railways and i put this right up there with it german railways is like insanely random but i I really like that. Like it's 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 almost like the randomness is on the other side of it with that game, and that's it. I don't explain it, but um, it's it's on the back end or the front. No, German Rose is on well, whatever. It's on the front end. This one's kind of a little bit on the back end. Um, so I like the kind of the contrast of that uh, comparing to that. So if you played German Railways and and, and, and and didn't like it, I would try this because I played German Railways a couple times in my group. And my family and I was like, I'm like, I think I'm the only one that likes this game. Uh, but this one is it seemed to go over uh, a little bit better with folks. So it's a little bit easier to sort of digest, I think, as well. So definitely take a look at uh, German or me, German Irish Gage. Thanks.